first of all, thanks for reaching 5,000 subscribers. It means a lot to me. And in this video, I will explain how I find high resolution images that I use for compositing and creating digital art. So stick around until the end so you understand everything how I do this. I start working on a project or create a design or whatever. I start with finding the best possible quality images for that. So I have a couple sites that I use when I open up my browser for internet. I have like these bookmarks and these are the sites that I use. So I have Pixabay here, I have Pixels, I have Unsplash and I have Photodoon. So first I try to find images on these free sites that we have here. So for instance, if I want to create something with a fox, I just search for foxes and I scroll down these images. Most of these images are, they look good, but they are not so good for creating art or creating a photo manipulation, or whatever. So what I usually do is I try to pick the ones that are like really close up shots. So for instance, this one is really, I already used this one before. This one is really good. As you can see, the quality is really good. So when you download this, make sure you select the biggest possible size. So not this one. So 6,000 by 4,000, that's really good for a free stock photo. You can see here, the size is really good. So this one you could use and create something really cool with. I think I used that one before. And when I download images, I don't just download one images and I start creating. I just spend a lot of time on just scrolling through all these images and try to find a couple of these. This one could also work. You can see here, the size is also pretty good, but the quality is a little bit well, it's not that good as the other one. So this one I would also download and I will just scroll to the size. Then I will go to another site and also start searching for a fox here. This one looks good. It's not, if you zoom in, you can see it's not that good, but it's okay for, for Instagram posts or whatever. So these are also good and try to find images that are really good. Like this one, I used this one before and it was a really good images. And also here, try to pick the biggest size possible to download. So don't download the small size. Pick the bi biggest that is available. Now, this one also on Splash, also good photos here. This one I also use, but you can see here the quality. Yeah, the quality is good for this one. Now, next is Photodoon. When I can't find images for a composite or if I have something in mind that I wanna create something, if you search on Photodoon, the quality here is even better. But Photodoon, I don't, take photos that are like in nature. Further than I take photos that are taken in the studio, like for instance, something like this. These are really good quality. And the good thing about this is you don't have to take like a monthly subscription or something like, I think Shutterstock has a monthly thing that you pay like for 10 images or something. That's why I never use Shutterstock. I only use photo. Here I can just buy one photo. Sometimes the photo is even like $5 and it's not much if you need something really, really for something for a project and you cannot find it on the free stock website. Just go to Fardu and well, if you want to spend money on a photo, it's, I think it's a good investment because if you work for clients or something like that, it's always good to have the best possible quality. So these are actually the only sites that I use to find images for my main subject in a composition. But for things like if I want to have like trees or something or rocks in a composition i never use well i ba barely use these sites because i need to spend time on cutting them out and it's really boring to do so what i usually do is i just go here google images and search 3d png and if i go to images i have all these images of, of trees and stuff like that and i don't have to spend time on cutting them out especially when you have like leaves or something leaves png you can place these on the foreground and blur them out and you won't even recognize the original photo. So don't spend time on cutting these out in in photos from sites like this, because if you're gonna search here for, for tree, you will find good images to use, but it's gonna take time to cut them out and stuff like that. So don't do that. All right, next thing is when you have, this is a good example for this. When you have, uh, you want to blur out the background, try to use images like this. You can see here the background is blurred out. And when you use something like this in a composition and you have like this background, it's gonna look real, really natural. So instead of using using a lens blur or gaussian blur, try to use images that are really blurred out. Maybe you can search like 
blur and find images that are blurred out. So for instance, let's see. This one could also work because this is a natural blur from the camera and when you blur things in Photoshop, it will never look as good as as an original photo. So try to find like a lot of images and download them. All right, next tip I can give you is if you don't know what you want to create or you're stuck with, 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 with something and you don't know what to create today, just scroll through the homepage. Usually they put images on the homepage that are really good. So when I don't know what to create today, for, for instance, I want to create something for Instagram today, but I'm not sure what I want to create. So I just scroll through these pages and here you can see they put one of the best photos they have on this page. So you can see here the size, this is really big and this is like a really good photo. I think I'm gonna download this for a composition. <laughs> this is really good to use. So try to scroll through the home pages from Pixabay. I know it's really good because they they put out a lot of animals on the home page. This one is also good. So here you can find like the best postal images. So what I usually do is I just start with searching for images and download a bunch of them. And after that, I compare them and see which one I'm going to use for a composition. So that's pretty much it. That's really easy to understand. And don't use photos like, let's see if you, for instance, want this photo to use and you see here, it's less than 2000 pixels or sometimes even less than a uh, thousand pixels or something like that. Don't use that. It's too small. It's better to have a really big photo after that, resize it to smaller size and use that one because the bigger the better and it's sometimes i know it's difficult to find really good photos but sometimes i even spend more time on scrolling through all these images instead of designing itself also a thing keep in mind that if i look at all these photos the best photos you could use is photos that are taken like in shadows or during sunset so don't use photos like this one. You don't want to use this one because this is taken at daylight and daylight photos are really difficult to create something good. So if you from the start start with a photo that is bad quality or taken during daylight, it's going to be really difficult to create something good with it. And at the end, you will notice that you're just going to spend a lot of time on it and you cannot create something good with it because you started with a bad photo. So the most important thing is to start with a good photo. If you don't have a good photo, the composite will look, well, it's not gonna look good. So this one is also bad quality. You can see it's not even focused here. It's like this fox is moving. So I will never use something like that. And this one I would probably also won't use because the quality is bad. And if you're gonna cut this out, you can see this blue in the background, it's gonna look really bad. So it's gonna be really difficult to create something good with it. So if you spent a lot of time on finding a good photo, you will spend less time on designing and trying to make it better and it will look really good. So that's pretty much it. I hope this is understandable for you and just spend a lot of time on searching images and the design will look a lot better if you do that. So thanks for watching. I hope you understand this and see you in the next video.